Today I want to talk about some history, on some black history, American history. Um, did you know that there's over a hundred what they call drowned cities or towns in America? And this happens when they kick people out of homes and they turn their little small towns into lakes. And predominantly black towns that this happened to. So I don't even want you to take it from me. I'm going to let you hear it for yourself. And then I'm going to have my commentary for you. Here we go. Over the past couple years, more Americans have become familiar with the story of the Tulsa race massacre, where a white mob burned a vibrant black community to the ground, which is crazy. Even crazier, dozens of other black towns have been erased off the American map, not by burning them down, but by hiding them underwater. Don't know what I mean? Well, let's find out in a segment called, How Did We Get Here? This is Lake Lanier. It's a lake in Forsyth County, Georgia, where people go swimming and boating and fishing and do a bunch of other lakey things. But before it was Lake Lanier, it was a town called Oscarville, Georgia. Now, Oscarville was a thriving, predominantly black community with a church, a school, and dozens of homes until the year 1912 when a very bad thing happened. Oh, two very bad things. In 1912, two black teenagers were accused of rape. They were tried, convicted, and sentenced to death in a single day. And after they were executed, a mob of white men terrorized, drove out, or killed all the black people in the surrounding area. And they did that until the entire black community of Oscarville disappeared. The county went from having over 1,000 black residents in 1912 to zero in 1920. That story is so sad, it makes this story look like a comedy. After the black community had been run off, the white people of Forsyth County said, you know what we could use? A big old lake. So they made one, right where the town of Oscarville had just been. They flooded the area and literally covered up the entire town with water. This is what it looks like right now. But the town is still under there. The homes and churches and schools, they're still down there. And now people go boating on top of them. Compared to that, this is truly a rom-com. Now, you might be thinking, what a weird isolated incident. But just like the rat who ate the pizza in the subway, this story is both crazy and common. Ever heard of Collegia, Alabama? It was once a thriving black community with a black college, the first black railroad, and literally hundreds of family homes. Today, it's Lake Martin. At least they had the decency to name it after a black person. And if you think this kind of thing only happened in the South, let me introduce you to a place called Central Park. It's named after that coffee shop on Friends. Central Park used to have a black community in it called York Hill. But the city of New York destroyed York Hill so that they could build the Central Park Reservoir. Because if there's one thing New York needs, it's another place for ducks to hang out. But if you come here, don't try and feed those ducks. They are very aggressive. Mess around and lose a finger. Now, when the residents of York Hill were kicked out of their homes, they fled to another black community nearby called Seneca Village. And then a few years later, New York destroyed Seneca Village too so that they could build Central Park on top of it. The craziest part of this story is that I work a few blocks away from a place where the government disappeared two black communities. And until recently, I didn't know about any of it. You know why? Because it worked. They tried to erase black communities and they came way too close. But now there are people doing the research. So we are finally learning about places like Henry and McKee Islands, which is now located under Lake Guntersville in Alabama. And Vanport, Oregon, which is now located under Delta Park. And all of these towns, which are currently literally underwater. Hey, wait, hold on. What was that last one? Old Neversink. That's a real place. Well, if we've learned one thing today, it's never assume something is unsinkable. There are over 100 drowned American towns, and many were destroyed in the name of something called development-induced displacement. That's when people have to leave their homes so the government can develop things like dams or parks or lakes. 
This happens to both white and black people, but historically when it happens, black people and other people of color are undercompensated for their property or not compensated at all. The theory is that the short-term bad effects are worth the long-term benefits for the community. But it's not fair if the long-term gain is mostly for white people. Now, luckily, there's a solution. It's a very complicated system. It involves a series of, ah, who am I kidding? Cut some dang checks. That's it. If you're going to kick black people out of their homes, make sure they have the money to stay on their feet. Cut a dang check. And yes, you can pay their descendants too because generational wealth is one of the many things that is destroyed when you put black communities underwater. So cut a dang check. These drowned towns are part of the black American history they don't want to teach you. It's ugly and it's gross and we don't even know all of it. And the more we find out, the harder it is to love this place that would do those things to so many people. And if you're feeling this way, which I often do, you can try loving what this country could become instead. Our history may be full of pain, but our future has limitless possibilities. So look to the future while simultaneously being suspicious of every lake you see. This has been How Did We Get Here? Yeah, man, so, um, wow, that was a lot to unpackage. Think about it, though, man. This, this cities, towns, under siege, literally, that's, <laughs> that's underwater. There's cities and towns underwater that they never told you about, that we didn't learn in our history books. That part of history was left out for a reason. They try to hide and mask and disguise who they really are. And I'm not one of them people who's who's like super duper black power against the white people. I think we're all one as a human race. And I think collectively, if we come together, we'll make this world a better place. I, I truly believe that. And I know it's possible. And I know it will happen. But there is people, there's a system that has been placed and there is systematic racism. And that is a byproduct of it. Black people getting kicked out of their homes, being slaughtered to the point where there's no more people left in the town. And then they flood the town with a lake because they need a nice little lake to, to go fishing on or put their boats on. And there's, there's history under there. There's history under these lakes. There's um our ancestors, our ancestors' blood is under there. Um I think moving forward, I think we just need to pay attention to the history and what these people are capable of. When they come in the guise of trying to help us, we need to start just take a step back and be like, oh, we really don't need your help. We don't have a good history with you guys. And even when they push more and be like, hey, but no, this time, like, no, we're not going to do the syphilis thing this time. This time it's okay to take the thing in your arm. Don't worry. We're not going to do that anymore. No, it's okay. I'm good. I'm going to go watch some Dr. Sabi videos and I'll be all right. Do y'all really believe that we can trust these people? Do y'all really believe that these people care about you? They care about us? Do you think that's air you're breathing? <laughs> hey, yo, man. I just wanted to plant this little seed in your head. And I want it to grow. Please share this video because this is important history that we all need to know. Bars. I'm off this. Hocus 4-5. Like, share, and subscribe. Till next time.